The lights are on, but how many are at home? Now the critical question as Omicron surges across the UK. Like the very worst of family Christmases, tensions are rising between those who want action now and those who say it's not as bad as it looks. This evening, the Prime Minister settled for a middle ground. No restrictions now, but not ruling them out at a later date, if need be. We agreed that we should keep the, the data from now on under constant uh, review, keep uh, following it uh, hour by hour. And unfortunately, I must say to people, we, we will have to reserve the, the possibility of taking further action to, to protect the public. Uh, and to protect public health, to protect uh, our NHS. And we won't hesitate to, to take that action. If it can be called good news, Cambridge scientists reported preliminary findings which appear to show Omicron causes less damage to the lungs than previous strains. Omicron is doing something different. It's doing better um, in the upper airways, but it's not doing as well in the lower airways. And that's, that's quite interesting. We, we're talking about ability to infect certain cell types and severity is... Um, it is the product of many different factors. Genetics of the person, the virus uh, is one of them that we're talking about now, but also your vaccination status, the responses you made from previous infections. At the weekend, the release of the SAGE papers used to help government ministers form their opinions warned that any delay could result in millions more infections. After a record-breaking Saturday across the UK with more than 900,000 booster jabs given, the vaccination hub at Basingstoke Hospital was quieter this morning. It was the best jab I've ever had. I'd been trying to book it, had some trouble getting through on the website, eventually got an appointment, but that wasn't till January time. And I work in an office and they're very keen to keep us in the, in the workplace as much as possible for collaborative work and things like that. So I need, really wanted and needed to get the jab as soon as possible. I'm not really too concerned for my own health. It's just more living at home with family. Obviously, the older they are, so they're more considerate for them. I think at this age, getting COVID isn't too life-threatening, but yeah, more family. They have had some Omicron cases here at this hospital, but their numbers of inpatients are not growing yet. We're planning for a variety of possible um, situations that may play out over the next few weeks and months. In our um, peak, we had 250 patients across our hospitals. We're planning that we may get back there again. We may even get higher than that again. In order to accommodate that, we need to stand down um, treatment that isn't life-saving and urgent. And that picture is so far being repeated across the country, except in the capital. And the highest rates there seem to be coinciding with areas of lowest vaccinations. Yet the concern is that the numbers are baked in. Infections last week leading to hospital admissions next week and the first week of January. It might be that it really is much, much, much less severe. There's no evidence for that in the early data. Could be, but I think that's a, that, it's a big gamble to take. Um, or it is bad and we end up with thousands of new admissions just at a time when we know that loads of hospital staff are off sick. We know that loads of hospital staff are traumatised and can't face another COVID wave. Um, and we end up with the NHS really kind of falling to its knees in January. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? With the need for any Christmas cheer, there was welcome news too from Moderna who announced very early results that its booster vaccine seemed to produce a strong antibody response against Omicron. And today, bookings can be made for 12 to 15 year olds to receive their second doses. Victoria McDonald there, and we'll be hearing from her uh, later in the programme. Well, joining me now is Professor Sir David Spiegelhalter, who's chair of the Winton Centre for Risk and Evidential Communications at Cambridge University. Thank you very much for coming back on the programme, uh, Sir David. Let's start then with the data. There is still a hope out there, is there not, in the community, perhaps in government, that this Omicron variant will be milder than the Delta variant or the Beta variant. Does the data, as far as you've got it now, suggest that that may be the case? There's still um, huge uncertainty about, about the severity of this virus, both in itself 
and uh, the amount that you can get around the immunity that's built up in the population. And uh, there's arguments to and fro. You know, people are making claims based on South African data, but there's no firm evidence yet. People are going to be watching London very carefully over the next few days. Um, in fact, you know, which has had a huge surge in um, in Omicron, you know, doubling every every couple of days. Um, but their admissions in London, they're not going up as the, 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 the speed at which they're going up may be slowing down, if you see what I mean. Um, it's not looking okay. quite as bad as it was in terms of the speed of increase. And also around half the extra admissions in London with COVID were in fact diagnosed with COVID after they've been in hospital. In other words, they had COVID anyway, which so vast numbers of people in London now do. And, uh, and then they found out they had COVID once they'd gone to hospital. But um, in terms of the cases, uh, you mentioned there were 91,000 today. But in fact, if we look back at when those tests were actually done, um, yeah, last Wednesday, there were more than 100,000 positive specimens taken, which is a real milestone. That's nothing, we've never reached that before. And unfortunately, yeah. cases in over 60s have started to rise. So um, we guaranteed a huge rise in cases. And that will cause a okay. lot of problems. Already, perhaps 450,000 people have tested positive over the last five days, and they're supposed to isolate over Christmas. And that could reach um, maybe well, a million by the time we get to Christmas. Right. So there's a little wiggle room for optimism there in what you just said. So are we also, do you think, given the data guaranteed, a dramatic rise in hospitalisation with that you know, famous two-week lag? It's it's very difficult to say the the models, you know, they tend to often to be quite pessimistic. Um, but even so, you know, they can project um, the, the, the worst it will get will be considerably less than it was last winter. But it could be considerably more. I mean, I know that sounds point, you know, you know, rather vacuous statement, but there is huge uncertainty. And that's why the government is struggling so much to come up with, you know, absolutely firm recommendations at this time. Um, and uh, as your previous interviewee said, you know, th th there's an extent of a gamble on this, you know, where they're making decisions yeah. in the face of big uncertainty. Does the evidence so far suggest that most of those people, and I know there have only been relatively few who've ended up in hospital with Omicron, are there because they did not get vaccinated or they've only had one jab, let's say? Uh, certainly, uh, particularly in intensive care, the, the great majority of patients in intensive care with COVID have not been vaccinated. And there's a particularly troubling excess in, in uh, pregnant women in, in intensive care without COVID. So, um, you know, enormous resources are being, being um, consumed, essentially, by people who have not been vaccinated. And I think it's very unfortunate. And although the boosters, really, it's a fantastic rollout, and 900,000 done yesterday or so, um, still, it's the, if people could get vaccinated, that would help everybody enormously. Because frankly, if you're not vaccinated, I think it's very likely you're going to get it over this winter. OK, and even if, you know, with this incredible booster program, which you just referred to, the numbers are quite astonishing. Given the fact that it takes a few days, if not weeks, for the booster to kick in, in some sense, it's already too late for this wave, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what's going to happen really up to the new year is pretty well baked in now. Um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 that, but, you know, after that, um, yeah, the boosters will make a big effect. And this isn't going to just going to go away. This is going to carry on into January and February. And um, we would hope that the peak, this the booster program will lower the peak and enable it to be brought down more rapidly afterwards. But no, no, the, the, we're in for we're in for quite a haul here. Well, let's try and have, you know, be a little bit confident, if we may, you know, in the run up to, to Christmas. And, but again, based on the data, not on any kind of wild aspirations and so on. Given the fact that we've got great therapeutics, given, I mean, you know, drugs that can treat COVID once you've got it, given the fact that we've got this amazing, you know, rollout of the booster program, even if this thing is as transmissible as it seems to be, can we expect a large rise in the number of deaths at the end of the day? The, the grimmest of the figures. 
again, huge uncertainty about that. We would hope that the death rate, because of the immunity that's been built up, because of the new treatments that have been developed, that the death rate should be substantially lower. And, and that has been found in South Africa, but where, you know, that is difficult to make those comparisons, I think. Um, but of course, if, you know, even if the death rate is halved or even more lower than that, if you get twice as many people infected, and particularly if they're older, more vulnerable, then you still get more deaths. And so, I, you know, there's a trade-off there. Um, you know, and uh, obviously we would be hoping for, uh, you know, for um, not have such an impact on deaths. And in fact, the models mm. when it comes to deaths are not so pessimistic as they are uh, for as they come for cases and hospitalizations. And given the sheer volume uh, of new uh, cases being created by Omicron, um, when can we expect the peak of this particular wave, do you think? Uh, all sorts of questions. Again, the modelers might suggest that it, that could be mid-January, it could be even later, um, it could be earlier. No, I'm sorry, this, I wouldn't want to speculate that at all. It's, it's very difficult to predict the peak of a... Of a of a of a, um, a wave like this, they, they, South Africa seems to have peaked, which is great, like four weeks mm. maybe after it started. Um, but um, I, I wouldn't like to predict that at all. Sir David Spiegelhalter, Professor Sir David Spiegelhalter, thank you very much indeed again for shedding some light on this these rather big questions and rather confusing, you know, solutions. Thanks very much.